with General Richard Myers. General Myers, thank you for joining us. Great to be here. Thank you. General, let's first discuss, if we can, the role and responsibility of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Well, the, the primary role is to be the principal advisor to the president and the National Security Council on, on military matters. Uh, the, the footnote to that is that it's not just your opinion, it's the opinion of the Joint Chiefs of Staff as well. So you, you present uh, the opinion of the group or your opinion and then any dissenters to the, that particular opinion or people that have other ideas, you have to present that as well. So it's a, it should be a very collaborative uh, effort as you provide your military advice to the uh, civilian leadership of our country. And how does someone get chosen for this position? Um, good question. Uh, but uh, I think it begins with the Secretary of Defense uh, looks at the, the senior officers that uh, he or she thinks are appropriate for the position and then working with the president uh, picks the person they think can best provide that, that military advice. Ultimately, I think the president has to be very comfortable with who is picked to be uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff because there's going to be a close and intimate relationship. When I was chosen, nominated to be chairman, it was before September 11, 2001. So I don't think anybody knew where this might, how intense the next four years uh, for all of us would be, my tenure, the four years uh, starting October 1, 2001, would and, be. In, in our system, this position is confirmed by the United States Senate. Correct. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, it's confirmed by the Senate. You have a hearing in front of the Senate Armed Services Committee uh, where they'll go over all the, all the things, to, all the questions they, they would like to ask about uh, your uh, how suitable you are for the position, you bet. And uh, in your uh, term as chairman, how often would you spend time with the president? Well, given that uh, by the time I was, from when I was nominated to when I was confirmed and installed in the office, took the oath of office, um, uh, September 11th happened. And so we were literally a nation at war during my whole tenure. In fact, we still are a nation at war eight years later. And um, at least weekly, uh, sometimes more than once a week uh, during those times because we're dealing with Afghanistan, we're dealing with Iraq, we're dealing with um, threats to, to this country, to America, we're dealing with threats to our friends and allies. We have lots of things going on around the world. So at least, I would say at least weekly and, and often more times uh, a week. And we're about to, I'm about to ask you about uh, um, the the, the process and the stakes that our current president is going through in terms of uh, deciding strategy in, in Afghanistan. But let me first ask you about uh, general presidents, your experience, experience with President Bush. Um, uh, how do they uh, take advice from um, their military officers? And how does that tend to factor into their overall strategic decision? Well, I think your listeners will find it interesting. I was appointed as vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff uh, under uh, President Clinton and then chairman under President Bush. So I had fairly close in, uh, relationships with both President Clinton and, and of course, President, President Bush. And I would say that the, their approach to accepting and, and seeking military advice is very, very similar. I think every president, uh, when it comes to uh, committing the blood and treasure of this nation wants to get the best military advice they can get. And so they, they're they very open to that. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have debate, of course, because uh, they may have a view or somebody on their staff may have a view at the White House would say, okay, why do you say that? Why, why do you think that? And, and that's very healthy. You think you want, you want a, lot of, a lot of dialogue. But they're both uh, they both come at it, I think, essentially from the same way as, you know, when we commit our blood and treasure from this country, uh, the president will make sure he gets it right. And uh, the military advice I get, I think he gets is, uh, is crucial to that. And what traditionally, in your experience, has been the relationship between the military advice from the military and the military advice from the civilian officials in the Pentagon? Well, that's, that's something that, as, as chairman, I think uh, uh, you try to work very, very carefully. Because when you go to a White House meeting on an important national security subject, and by the way, there's never a single meeting. These, these kind of issues are worked over time, over weeks, sometimes months, sometimes years. Uh, but as you formulate your military advice, you're also working with your, your boss. In the case of the chairman, that's your immediate boss is the uh, Secretary of Defense. And, so, and he's got a staff. He's got a policy shop and others that are shaping uh, his uh, 
opinion on a particular issue and shaping that issue as well. So what you have to do is start working at the ground level in the Pentagon, working these issues. So by the time it comes to the secretary and the chairman, there may be some issues to work out, but hopefully you can come to agreement on, on the way forward. So when you get to the White House, uh, the advice he's going to get from his uh, one of the senior cabinet officials, the Secretary of Defense, and the advice he gets from his principal military advisor, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, is not divergent. It could be divergent. And uh, under Secretary Rumsfeld, he would encourage, uh, encourage that. He said, if you've got a different view, if you don't agree with this, uh, he would say, if you don't agree with this, Dick, then you tell him what you think. So, I mean, it was, and I think that's pretty typical. I mean, this is, this is a bunch of people trying to do what's best for the country. And so there's, there's nobody trying to muzzle somebody else when it comes to providing the information. Let me ask you now, General Myers, about... Uh